da 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 Welcome to the Rats Podcast on a three-day weekend. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! He- Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Did you like the themed intro bands? Yeah, it's almost like, like we had music playing. It's kind of fucking hot in here. But I feel like if we open the window, we're going to hear street noises. Yeah, it's going to, you know, we wouldn't have the ability to um <laughs> to deal with that. You know, Vance, this is uh, this harkens back to vintage rats when yeah. heat was a constant problem. Right. It's, it's going to become worse because, you know, the summer's coming. Sure is. We can't have an AC on. No. Uh, you'll be able to hear that too much. No, that'd, that'd be crazy. Um, how you doing tonight, folks? Uh, we're here. Uh, as you can see, it's a party night because me party? as a... It's me and you. <laughs> Baines has his Hawaiian shirt on or his uh, Princess Mononoke shirt on. Um, and you're wearing your pajamas. Yeah, well, I just woke up. But um, me, because I'm a crippling alcoholic, I drink often on the show uh, when it's a Tuesday and I have to be up for work in about four hours. However, you you folks know it's a party show when uh, Baines breaks out a Guinness. Well, it's a it's a weekend night, everyone. So you know, as opposed to a Tuesday, Baines drinking Guinness is one of the few ways he um, speaks and behaves like my grandfather. What does that mean, everyone? <laughs> Comment below if you know what that meant. Um, what does that mean? I become old. No, I, well, sometimes you act a little old. Like like, like grumpiness is like an old person trait. No, it's not. There's plenty of young grumpy people. <laughs> right. I guess I guess I can't really say because I'm grumpy too. You're you're so grumpy. Yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, but I mean, and we, you, I, I think you and my grandfather are the only people I really talk to about historical matters very often. Uh huh. Um. So that's part of it, and just looks, I guess. I, I don't look like um, your grandfather. <laughs> He's 91, folks. Um, oh, it's his birthday? When was, when was he had a birthday good? back in March. Oh. 91, he made it. Um, he, he made it? That's when you know you made it, folks. <laughs> You've escaped the terror of um, eternal non-existence for an extra year. That's not going to get you. Ooh. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'll drink to that. Uh, so tonight we have a very special uh, film. More Star Wars, everyone. If you couldn't More tell by the thumbnail and the the, the title of the, of the video of the video, I'm sure the thumbnail is awesome. I'm sure it's I'm on Ahsoka's body. <laughs> That's probably gonna happen. Do you, do you know what my original? When I tried to make the thumbnail for uh, Attack of the Clones, it just wasn't looking good. Uh, from the movie, something from the movie. It's from the movie. Um, was I on Dexter's head? No. Was it was it an alien? No. No? No. What was it? Um, it was uh Django Fett and young Boba Fett <laughs> sitting next to each other. <laughs> I was Boba Fett. And yeah, you were Boba Fett. And Which, wow, that'd be cool. What I was fine what trying to find too, and just none of the Google images looked good or had like good resolution or anything. Mm-hmm. But like the there's it, for Attack of the Clones that they took these ridiculous li- r- ridiculous like posed shots of every character. Like in front of like a like a school day a school picture day background, right? And I was I was really hoping there'd be like some awkward shot of like Django Fett like with Boba Fett like with his arms crossed next to him. That's what I was gonna use because I know it exists. I just I couldn't find oh, it. Oh no, it wasn't real. <laughs> um. Oh geez. Hopefully, they don't fucking rip out the <laughs> plug for the equipment. It took us like forty five minutes to get ready. I know. You know, folks. You think because this is not a hard. This this when people watch this podcast they don't go whoa well, the production how, value how'd they do that all oh, this is how they get that lighting wow. <laughs> how how is how does the mic go with the video how is their video wow I can barely see them how, <laughs> how can I see them over that table how how can I see that table over them well, th- those chairs are so low I can barely see them over the countertop. <laughs> yeah. How, whoa! How did they not delete the video as soon as it got on their computer? Last uh, another lost episode, I guess, folks. Yeah, I didn't even want to. Bring, I was so depressed about that, I didn't even want to bring it up. Oh, my, my bad. I guess never mind. Well, no, you can bring it up. I just, it's, you know, folks. It feels like 
uh, I'm Jesus on the cross, and I've just right. been speared in the ribs. <laughs> You're right. Um. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Clone Wars movie. Um, I was very interested to talk about Before this one. Before the show, folks, you might notice my cup of water here in the shape of a stormtrooper head. You, you had that for the, the the Phantom Menace one, I think. It was when you first showed it to me. Maybe I think it, it took me like took me like an hour to realize it was a stormtrooper head. I thought it was like a I couldn't tell what it was. But, yeah, but now I see it. Well, the thing is, last time it was so easy to say because since I drank so much whiskey, I filled it to the top. Right, it's a lot easier when you with the whiskey. I'll probably put a little beer in there. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Clone Wars. Uh, this is the 2008 uh, animated film. Uh, the 3D graphics. Um, in this, uh, so that this would have come out, I think about three years after Revenge of the Sith. Um. And uh, this is kind of the start of the show that went until, like, kind of recently, sort of. Well, what what happened with the show is it is it aired regularly on Cartoon Network until about, I think, twenty twelve, maybe twenty thirteen, and then there were like two lost seasons, or there there was a lost season. They, they just like didn't finish it for a while, right? It's Disney. Well, they they fin yeah they finished one season that didn't get released. Uh, until like years, like five years later. Much like our Lost Rats episodes. Yeah, well, those will never be released. Maybe they will. Well, because the difference is Dave Filoni didn't make the Clone Wars episodes and go, I accidentally... <laughs> I think I might have deleted it. <laughs> um, gee, it's, so, it's so fucking hot in here. Um, easy. How about we take it easy? With the heat? With you. With your, with your fucking... Going wild. All right. Maybe I just need to cool off. Maybe. Have a <laughs> oh, fuck. That's the good stuff. A Coors. Mm. But yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the lost season came out a few years later. Then there were... There were more episodes in production that they then... That that also never came out. So lost. so basically, what happened is that they had a, a season all set to go, and they had a season after that that they were already like half done with. Um, when the Disney thing happened, so they they released the season that was all set, and then the season that they were still working on, they just I guess scrapped, and that's when they made the sort of last season for streaming, um, in the last season of the Clone Wars. Is tough. Uh, the the movie the movie at the end is all it's right. It's not good. I heard it was. I, I've heard. It only, I haven't seen it. I've only heard really good things. Um, like I see your mic. I want to make sure it's yeah, on. It's still red. All right. Um, th there's some tough episodes <laughs> in the last one, and it's it's it also the it has an arc where it sets up for the bad batch, which is real. I don't. And I don't like. I've heard bad things about it. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. It hurts. It, it um, hurts. Yeah, but uh, but this this film this this is a very pretty much widely criticized film. People hate this movie. People hate this movie, and it's it's usually people who love the Clone Wars hate this movie. Like, there's always like an asterisk. Like, the movie sucked, but and people who don't like the Clone Wars don't have an opinion on the movie. Yeah, right. I, I guess. I guess they just lump it all together. Yeah. Um. But uh, I I haven't seen this movie in a while. I I've seen this movie. I don't know how many times as a kid. Countless times. I remember being ten and enjoying it. I think. Yeah. Uh, and when I went on Disney Plus, I must have watched it recently because it was half watched. So, um, and I gotta say, I I had a pretty good time watching this movie. It's all right. It's obviously just four episodes stitched together. Exactly. Oh. Um, this this is a fun movie. It's uh very targeted for children. Clearly, by this the the quips and the child. Yeah, yeah, the quips and the and the Ahsoka's um, entire existence. Yeah, so ah Ahsoka's really awful. Um, and and I I know people. 
love Ahsoka now. They, they go fucking crazy. They did Ahsoka. a complete uh, 180 on Ahsoka. Like people who like scream in movie theaters over excitement. Right, right. Because now she has her own show. And they have Ahsoka like bumper stickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a dude that when I was bartending, always come up with an Ahsoka shirt. <laughs> um, it's just like... It, she, so a, a lot of the stuff in the Clone Wars, like 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 the show, the show's not bad. It's it's all right. I I think like, um, the 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 first few episodes of like the actual show, you can tell like they 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 look like they weren't finished. Like like the characters are more uncanny than in this. It, but the the show's pretty good. The season one and two are pretty good. They're they're very action packed like this, and then they uh, prequelize it. Where there's entire episode arcs, a four episode arc of meetings will start appearing in like season three. They'll start doing the prequel meetings. Yeah, I remember. I remember being, I don't know, like twelve, right, and like really watching the movie, the episodes as they came out. And, and, and at some point, I yeah. stopped, and I don't remember why. Yeah, it was probably because of the meetings. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember when I stopped. So. I I have a a specific memory. You know how you just randomly remember certain things exactly. I have a memory of me being at your house. I think I had uh, my DVD collection of every season on me, and it could have been my DVD collection. It, okay, did you? I didn't know you had the you had the seasons on DVD. I had like the first three. Oh okay. Or five, I had a couple. I don't That's know pretty if, much what I had. I don't too. know if I had all of them, but I, I yeah. also had. Well. You know, after season after season four, it gets a little, it gets tough. After season three, it gets kind of tough. After half of season three, it gets kind of tough. Um, I, I don't really remember the uh, specifics. Of the but I, I just remember we were we were looking for an episode to put on. Mm-hmm. And we were like, dude, can we put on an episode where like the clones and the droids like actually fight? Because <laughs> I think we had just watched a meeting. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> I but. specifically remember that. And I was like, "Yeah, we get everything." I looked at had so like, um, the 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 thing about this movie that I I my that is my main problem with like the uh, the Clone Wars show in general is that it's not the Clone Wars show is one of the most unique uniquely written shows just in structure because they have it's it's made up of arcs that have the same characters but they're not in the season in any particular order yeah i feel like they're like they're not in chronological order yeah the arcs aren't really in chronological order so like like are there episodes like before the movie <laughs> like a yeah so so in season one halfway through season one you get what's like technically the first episode. Right. And there's like two episodes before the movie. And then in season three, I think they have another episode that's supposed to be before the movie. So they just go all over the place. But but it's it's not like, you know how in like a real war, the battles affect each other. Yeah. So like one battle will kind of cause another to happen. Well, yeah, the show isn't like it's not one continuous story. Like 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 the story isn't like, you know, like like in the in the Civil War, like after the Battle of Bull Run, you know, let's you know move on to this this location, you know, yeah, it's a lot, a lot it's, jump jump around random lo- locations doing random things. In in the the battles are never like, we need to get this ground for this. It's always like some strange. The separatists have like a virus, <laughs> or the 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 separatists. There's a a pirate, and and a lot of, something else that really annoys me is there's a lot of like what you said back in um, our childhood years. Uh, a lot of clones not fighting droids. Like like there's a lot of pirates just fighting each other, which is cool, but it's something about the Clone Wars. I'd really like to see the war. Like what happens? Maybe because because in 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 real wars there's like significant battles that like turn the tide. But in the Clone Wars, you hear from the announcer that every arc the battle could turn the tide. <laughs> it's always, 
about to be over. Yeah. The good guys always win. Which is weird because... They do always win, I think. I think they always win. Do they ever they, lose? they win every battle, so you'd think the war would be over quickly. Um, which, I, I guess, because it's a kid's... I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I guess even in, like, the 2003, like, uh, Gendi uh, Tartofsky, that, that how you say his name? Something like that. Well, that was just, um, like, like, mini... It was, like, almost filler, right? <laughs> it was just... It was just many clips of incoherent fights. Kind of, but that that one did like a lot more to like set things up. Right. Like 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 in the two thousand three Clone Wars, it 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 first it sets up the clones. You see the clones go on a mission like by themselves. Right. Which I guess this one has an episode at the beginning of the clones doing shit by themselves. Um, and also, which, which clones would would you prefer? Because in the 2003, and I don't even know which clones I like better. I probably a mixture of the two. But in the 2003, the clones are pers- uh, shown as almost kind of like droids, where they're they're very strictly programmed to to only speak, you know, when it ma- like in military ways and like go here, go there. You know, they don't they don't really have. So, like they don't really have any personalities, which kind of makes sense because they're all clones programmed to fight a war. That's probably more interesting. Uh, maybe I don't know. But you, then you, you, you I, like do stuff with it. But you can do stuff with that. But then, but then in the Clone Wars, it's also interesting when the clones have different personalities. It's a little more fucked up in the in the, in the show, right? Cause, exactly. Cause, you know, they're just actual just guys. They're just actual guys. Um, then they all have drastically different haircuts. <laughs> they do. Um, and, and, and in this movie, the clones aren't really fleshed out a lot, but the, they're fleshed out a lot in the show, um, which which is pretty cool. I, I I do like that. I think it's a cool idea. Um, what one really silly part of the show is when they go to like um, Camino and see the child clones, and they all have like different haircuts, which wouldn't really make any sense, because wouldn't it make more sense that the clones get personality after they leave? Like, would it make sense that every clone leaves Kamino with the standard military buzz cut and then might customize their hairstyle on the... Instead of all the ch- does all the children have different... I don't know. I don't. Maybe. I guess that would make sense, but then you can't tell them apart, you know, on the show. The kiddies I, can't. I, I guess. Then the eight-year-old you, like, wait, which one's what? I guess but as a kid, I don't think you really care because the clone children speaking is weird and boring. I, I kind of like that episode, I think. Well, I think you liked it because of Boba Fett. That's the, that's the Boba Fett arc. Was he? Was he in that one? When they were that's like... The, well, yeah, that's that's like when they're on the ship. No, I think in the other one. Oh, in Kamino? Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're thinking of the one... They're not child clones. Those are adult oh, men. Oh, they, they, they were adults. Never mind. You think of adult men, so... I think and they I'm, had the same haircuts. <laughs> I'm thinking of... So, a... <laughs> so all... Because all clones leave with the same haircut. Right. So then the way it works... Is that they're all born with different hairstyles? That can't be true. And then they—I'm just according to the show. Born Acor- like, according to lore, it's probably different. They're like ten. I, yeah, but so in the show, they all have different haircuts, right? So the way it works, using context clues from the show, is as children they have different hair. They grow up and all their hair merges to the same haircut. Then when they leave, like once again, they get different hair. Wait, because probably when they're like ten, it's not the training isn't like that intense. You know, I imagine when they're a little older, it's a little more intense. Maybe you know, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, maybe I guess. I I don't know. Um. But yeah, and uh. So yeah, all all that being said, um. The movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, I I don't even know. We were we're on a tangent. Um. The movie. The movie and most of the show, I think, would be pretty good uh, without, in a vacuum, I will say. It has the introduction of Nice Anakin. Nice Anakin, right, right. Um, but but I, I yeah, not exa- which doesn't make sense with the other movies. <laughs> At but all. Like, 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 you know how your criticism of the Fallout show was like it was a good show if like it didn't if if there wasn't lore already established, like if they couldn't have done something with this other stuff that was there, right. that's what the, it's just full of missed opportunities. 
Like that's like what all of Star Wars is. <laughs> a, like, a, one big missed <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> one big sad missed opportunity. Things just happen off screen. But it, the the difference is like in in the original trilogy, the things that happen off screen, it, like between the movies, are kind of like things you wouldn't need to see really. Like the rebels moving from Yavin to Hoth and making a base wouldn't really be that interesting it could happen off screen and nowadays that'd be a movie but what what the prequels do is like the battle of coruscant which is like the supposed to be the ending decisive battle when the republic like kind of wins the war is uh happens between movies <laughs> it doesn't even happen in the show either. I know. I, I remember seeing the the 2D one for the first time, and it shows 2D Battle of Coruscant is pretty cool. And it shows um, Palpatine being abducted. Yeah, yeah, right. I remember seeing that for the first time. I'm like, wow, it would have been cool to see that in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> and I, I think the reason he was able to do that is because they were like, yeah, it's not in the movie. So he's like, so so I can do it. You you, you mean in my my five minute filler cartoon show? I should do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, like a lot of stuff in his Battle of Coruscant is from deleted scenes when they were actually going to oh, do it yeah, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I love Gendy Tartofsky, by the way. he um, Primal is one of my favorite shows of all time. And because of that, I would probably, um, if he wanted to, I'd, I'd let him put his penis in my mouth. All right. Or let him come in my beard. But not a fan of Samurai Jack, right? No. No? No. Samurai Jack... Um, I would put in the category of trying to like, like, like you ever watch something you're trying to convince yourself, no, this is good. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I would put Samurai Jack in the category of. I've only seen probably like five episodes, but what I've seen, I remember liking. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I remember thinking like, oh, that's. It's, it's very, it's very similar to Primal. It's not, it's very, it's not similar to Primal at all in tone. It's close. Like Primal's more he like fights a puppy army, and they they have dog f- print flags. Well, that was just the first episode. He goes to these cartoonish guys who are trying to go into space, and there's space bees. You like space bees? <laughs> Anything with space bees is pretty good. Uh, it, I really did, I did not have a good time. Well, most episodes like it's not, not a lot of talking. I remember. I, I think it's I think it's nothing like Primal. They're they're pretty similar. Uh well anyway. Um so we, we get the uh so so but and this is made by Dave Filoni, who I would not uh who I, I don't enjoy. Right. Um 'cause you're a pickle puss. Right. Uh but but like like what I was saying about the two thousand three one, like sets up the clones, sets up fucking um has Anakin and Obi Wan together Anakin eats a bug Anakin does eat, eat a bug um, he eats a bunch of bugs right yeah right I like, I like that I like when there's that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Anakin acts like Anakin in the 2003 he bitches and moans and he his fight with Asajj Ventress um, in the 2003 ones is something I watch frequently right because I enjoy that quite a bit um, uh, the intro of General Grievous is Crazy. It is pretty crazy. In the uh the two thousand three one. Oh shit. Who's uh, home? Hello, Amari. It was young Amari. Um in Baines, did you notice that she's right on time to do her new sports segment? She is. I she wanted to do a, a tribute to uh Jimmy uh Jones. He was just traded to the uh the Jim, Tigers. Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones just traded to the Tigers right. as a front tackle. Um anyway. Uh, and then, but compare that to like the, the, um, the 3d Clone Wars show where General Grievous is just there. <laughs> he just shows up one episode and we go, yeah, I mean, I've seen him from episode three. I guess I know he exists. So that's all right. He's just way cooler in the 2D, 2D one. He's not like, yeah, he, he's actually strong, which George Lucas didn't want him to be strong. George Lucas like disagreed with Tartofsky's uh, portrayal of him because he said in his quote he wanted him to be a a mustache twirling villain. Oh, yeah, George knows best. Which is way lamer. Well, yeah, but you know George, you know, <laughs> when I get any question, George Lucas, I wouldn't. 
he 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 wants um General Grievous to be more uh Jar Jar Binks esque. Um which is is way worse. It is way worse. Well, I guess the the three D one is more accurate to that lamer general who gets defeated by Gungans, by the way. <laughs> Have you seen that episode? That's a sad one. Um <laughs> Also, speaking of Gungans, uh, there's no Jar Jar in this movie. No, no. And he also, because there is Jar Jar later in the Clone Wars show. But you notice in the 2003 show, he's suspiciously missing. Like someone did not want to um, add him to the cartoon. Um, but yeah, I, I got very excited when this movie was starting with the, uh, the chatter, the clone chatter right. on their, uh, their, their fighters. Do um, you think that was cool? I remember thinking it was sick when I was like nine. <laughs> I, I still think it's pretty sick. Um, I, I think it's less cool than I did when I was a child, but it's still neat. Yeah, I remember being like aw- awestruck, like whoa, by the clones. I'm I'm pr- I'm still awestruck. Like I was pretty excited. Um, and honestly, honestly, watching this movie made me want to uh, continue like watching more of the show. Like, I immediately wanted to put on an episode of the show. Episode one. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Yoda and three clones. The one where Ahsoka goes to Coruscant with the old Jedi. It, and, and, and learns, um, and, and learns the tortoise oh. and the hare story. <laughs> Remember that episode? That was good. Um, vaguely. The, the turtle Jedi. And his, 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 his lightsabers and his cane. Oh yeah, that guy was he was like a mix of like a turtle and like a dinosaur and like like you, an elderly man. Yeah. That was good. Um Yeah, that 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 was always kind of a rough episode. Um but he also uh if if you ever saw I think it was the Mandalorian, they put him in that. He's just he's like a dead body. <laughs> no, he no, I think he's in um Kenobi. He's like a dead body in like a a tank. Really? Yeah. Uh, oh, Amari! What are you? Uh, what welcome, are you up to welcome here? Welcome to the show, Amari. Guys, you might want to welcome Amari, who is here tonight. <laughs> Amari gets paid to be on <laughs> the show. Amari gets paid many dollars. What are, what are you doing, uh, dear? Get, uh, that was that was that me, was Amari. Michael. Amari, that was me. I, well, Do you like the look on her face Amari, when you say you bought Guinness? <laughs> it's like she was mad at me. <laughs> Amari's mad that there's Guinness in the house. Uh, Amari, you had before, and you had the same reaction. What do you mean? I've never- <laughs> <laughs> do you know, you know what Amari said when I said I'm buying Coors? And Coors, my, the beer I usually drink. Yeah. And Amari's been dating me for a year and a half. She goes, oh. What are you surprised? It's just a little rough. Amari, I threw out your, um, your strawberry. Baines noticed the strawberries. The moldy strawberries. Yeah, they... Nope. No, <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see those. Um, I've been meaning to carry around. Right. Later, right. later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. No problem. No problem. Pookums. Um. Right. Have we seen a joint? This room? I don't think so. Um. You lost it. Yeah, I've I've not seen a joint, unfortunately. Um, well, I don't really know. Folks, things. Amari, Amari, wait, 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 come back real quick, come back, come back, real, real quick, come Amari. back, just like ten seconds. If if you had to comment on um, Jeremy Richards' uh, recent involvement with the Tigers, who's Jeremy? Jr. Just by, he goes by Junior. Oh. No comment. <laughs> I don't know if I necessarily agree with that sentiment, but um, you see, Bane, some some sports broadcasters would criticize Omari for that that take over a neutral take. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, back back to the show. Right. Uh, the the intro gave me chills, and and I I think the action overall looks pretty good in this. It's fine. I I, th- I think it looks I think it looks really good. I I think this has. A lot of fun action that I think we wished was in the prequels that was replaced with meetings. 
You know what I mean? I, I suppose. Well, it, it, it does suffer from the uh, child show fight syndrome um, where, okay. where nothing ever happens. Uh, okay. Um, I can kind of see that. What, what, what do you mean by that? Well, that, that's, you know, every show has at least like two fights. And and usually the result is it's more just right. like a, a me thing like just bugs me. It's just like you, like you know the result's gonna happen before it happens. Like it's just it's just most fights are right. Tension. Well, that that's that's also just kind of these characters. Um, I mean, it it is a kids show and um, sort of a Star Wars thing, uh, like you said. But it's it's also a result of uh, the characters we know that they live right through the war. Um, which which it is interesting they they take a lot of um throughout the show they take a lot of jedi um that we don't see in episode 3 just so they can kill them off dramatically um like i think eth koth was supposed to die he te- before the show in lore he died in attack of the clones at the battle of geonosis but for this show they resurrected him so they could do a few arcs with him and then have a dramatic death so the small one will be one eye no, that's that's Evan Peel. Uh, I believe he was also resurrected. I don't think we see him in Attack of the Clones, do we? Uh, we might. I don't know. Actually, probably not. He's he's in the third one. He's, <laughs> he's like who cares? He's like a, a more. No, no, he dies in the show. No, he's he's oh, in the Revenge of the Sith. You think he was in? He's, he's in one of the movies. Even Peel, yeah, he's in he's in the Phantom Menace. No, I I, I, I just didn't think we saw him in in the other two. I, I, don't, I don't, don't think we do. Well, I know we don't see him in Revenge of the Sith because they kill him. Um, but he's just like human Yoda. He's Yoda with human skin. Um, uh, so we, we kind of get what I was talking about. The, uh, the, the, the main plot line of this film is the Jabba's son plot line. That's just silly. Which is retarded. (laughs) That is so fucking stupid. It's really stupid. Um, that's that's like when I was saying how the the episodes have these weird little tasks like like it can never just be like you know like like this this movie couldn't just be like the war started we have to do things people just always do in war we have to you know get here you know get some allies do do a, a battle here to secure this area it's like no we have a little specific silly task to do. Because I guess, and, and the reason is vague, that Jabba might let us use some vital trade routes? Yeah, Nick, they're vital. Remember, remember Jabba's vital trade routes? I, I guess. <laughs> it's just, it's... You, you don't think the, 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 the small hut was cute and funny? And you wish there was more of him? Um, you, you wish he was in every episode? Yeah, the J- Jabba's son... What if, looks, what, if, what if he was in every episode? <laughs> what if he was a sidekick? Um, well, there there is something they do like what what they set up in this movie, especially with Anakin's like weird ship and everything, and um, him and Ahsoka and Captain Rex is is they try to get kind of like a cartoonish group that only lasts for like the first half of season one until they realize let's just give them fighters like they have in the movie. And they get rid of his stupid fucking ship. His cargo van. His cargo, which is supposed to be him. Him. It's uh, it was actually called the Twilight. His ship. Well, what an edgy name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and folks, if you're wondering, the Lego set for the Twilight. You own three of them. Lackluster. It was always a very lackluster Lego set. It's lackluster. Why? It certainly is. Um, just uh, poor, just poorly built. Um, and it also. Because it comes with a baby hut minifigure, <laughs> that makes it lackluster. Um, See, they're, they're, I was looking at the Lego website yesterday, yeah. and uh, they're uh, currently like it's currently being released. They're making a uh, Eye of Sauron mm-hmm. set. I, yep, I, I've I, already seen a full review about it. I thought it looks pretty cool. Looks really cool, especially if you have the Rivendell and the and the money to buy it. Yeah, it's like six hundred dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it came. It came. It comes with like uh, the mouth of Sauron, uh, Gothmog, who is o- only mentioned one, in in one passing line in the in the book, but he's a big character. And um, how big is it? Like, is it? It's pretty big. From the floor, <laughs> it's, I go. It's pretty big. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I know. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't see why it's so much money. But um, I know. I wish they started releasing little Lord of the Rings sets again. I might, I might pick up a few. A few. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> um. Yeah. What, what, what were you saying? Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. A, a very, a very weird, a weird uh, plot to choose. Oh, if it, if it isn't the little deer. Oh, that's all right. That's all right, uh, miss. Um, miss. <laughs> also, uh, Mace Windu. For the for the brief time Mace Windu is in this, uh, how long is he in it? Like 10 seconds. Right. Um, did you know that was Samuel L. Jackson's real voice? Yeah, I knew that. Did you know that piece of trivia? Also, Christopher Lee's in the movie, too. He is? Sure. I didn't know, I didn't know sure that part. Is. He voices Count Dooku? Yep. I mean that that would make sense, um, and no one else from the movie is in the show, besides C three PO. Right. Well, yeah, that's um, who's it? Anthony Daniels? Because Anthony Daniels is so paranoid that someone else will start doing C three PO that he does everything. I mean, he does fucking the Lego video games. He does the fucking. I mean, it probably pays really well. Doesn't does apps? I'd do it too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'd probably do it too. But it's just like, uh, yeah, it probably does pay. But he's such a, um, he's very protective about the C-3PO figure, which I guess fair enough. Right. Because it probably is like a, um, make a lot of money from it. Are you still looking for that joint? So sad. Okay, sweetie. It's on a quest. Um, is it, it's not in that bag? It's not in your uh, Mega 420 promo bag? The black bag right there? Okay. Yeah, that's it. Baines, that's our um that's a, that's our welcoming dish of condoms and lube. Everyone gets a pack of it whenever Everybody gets a condom. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Amari. Everyone gets a condom so if they sleep over they can pee in it instead of getting up. <laughs> How thoughtful of you guys. I remember I hear, I heard one of the interns on Opie and Anthony would say that he had so many wet dreams, he would wear a condom in his sleep. Couldn't have been true. <laughs> no way that was true. I'm going to um, get again as, as you okay. ramble on about the plot. All right. Well, you can you bring your mic with you. I guess yeah, I, I can mean, still hear you. I'll have to open it. That's a, a two-hand thing, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, so, and then we, we do see General Grievous, but for a, a second... Um, it's something I would like because I've um, just as a, a writing exercise, I've I've tried to kind of rewrite the Clone Wars show before. And something I think is really cool and what, what I would love to do is because G- General Grievous is a, obviously an alien before he becomes like the cyborg. Just w- it'd be pretty cool to see that like him being the alien and Count Dooku supposedly like shadily. um in the lore, he causes some shuttle to explode and Grievous to go in his little suit. Like, that'd be cool to see in the show. And trends him in the Jedi arts. Remember when uh, Grievous t- tells Obi-Wan that in the movie, even though they've met like six times in the show? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's another thing. Um, so, so this show is really, in this movie too, is really based a lot on just like, Revenge of the Sith, which I, I think, to be honest, is why a lot of, that's a lot of people's favorite prequel. It's just because in Revenge of the Sith, you can see people you've heard about from the Clone Wars. That's Commander Gree. Like, you know. Um, there's also this the stupid line where um, Grie- when Grievous meets Anakin, so they can never meet in the entire show. And when Anakin tells Dooku, my powers have doubled since the last time we met, like, like, and they met like a week ago. Yeah, yeah, they, they met very recently. And uh, we we also see just a little nitpick. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Just a little nitpicks. But. No, those are pretty big nitpicks. Those are pretty big problems. Yeah, they don't bother me I think. much. I don't know. They bother me quite a bit. Um, and and I I would I would like them to meet in the show, but I, I would like it to be more of a big deal. Like like they meet in the show and in the movie constantly. They uh, Anakin and Count Dooku meet in this movie, and it's like not really a big deal. Like like you would think. If if I was writing something where Anakin fought Dooku on his own for the first time, wouldn't it be a little more dramatic than in this movie? Wouldn't it be like, wouldn't you want to have 
the uh, the stakes of like Luke versus Vader in Empire Strikes Back. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that'd be way better. But it feels like uh, I don't know. It feels like he's fighting Kite Man. I I don't remember Kite Man, Spider Man's evilest villain. Uh no, I'm lost on that. Um, that that reference uh, eludes me. He, he his evil power is um having a kite, and it's it, you know it's just a silly supervillain. Right. That's the same um, you know level of uh, drama given to Count Dooku in this movie. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Kite man. And Ooh. And, and yeah, in this movie and just in general, um, but yeah, it it is the kid show thing where. Or, or even, I guess you could say, like the superhero movie thing, where heroes and the, the same heroes and the same villains constantly fight, and you assume they're usually there's not going to be any injuries. Usually, either. nothing happens. Usually, nothing happens. Um, so we start off at a Republic Medical Station, which you probably didn't know because you're not familiar with the lore. That's above Christophsis. I knew that. And then, uh, so so we we open on Admiral Ularen, which I. Um, all these Republic cruisers, I guess, have uh, clones for all of them, except there's one normal guy who is the leader, um, which I think it'd be better if there were normal guys and clones kind of mixed throughout the thing. Um, be a little more organic, maybe some aliens. Uh, but you, Lauren, um, which you probably know is from episode four. He's he's one of the guys we see. I think it's the same voice who starts off the every episode, I believe. Um and uh, this this movie gets right to it, gets right to the action. You know, like like other um, Star Wars things we've watched. There's, there's a there's a lot of a lot of guff before we we, we get to the. Uh, it's almost mostly almost all guff. <laughs> it's yeah, but but especially to to the opening, there's a lot of guff before anything interesting happens. Um, but yeah, this this gets right to it. Uh, and I thought it started off pretty good. I, I like the uh, Christophsis battle. I don't think it makes any sense for clone troopers, uh, soldiers who use ranged weapons to charge. But um, I guess that happens in the movies too. And I guess you could also just say clones are programmed to not really care if they die. Um, so I, I I wasn't too unhappy with that. Uh, I, I did wish, because we, we see uh, Phase 1, uh, Commander Cody... And then we see Captain Rex, who is a new character for the Clone Wars, who is the leader of the 501st, who, you know, it, it, it makes you not really not really believe he's the leader of the 501st since he's just missing from Revenge of the Sith. And since in Revenge of the Sith, it's not clear that the 501st is troops that Anakin leads specifically. It just, it just never comes up. Well, you would also just assume that Anakin's so whiny... You you would assume that the only reason Obi Wan is like a general, because because Grievous only refers to Obi Wan as the general, so you'd assume since Obi Wan's on the council, he commands enough respect to like lead a a legion of soldiers. Yeah, it's weird that all the Jedi are, are generals. That's odd. Yeah, and like Ahsoka's a commander because she's a Padawan. And she's like eleven. Right. Um, and small. But but you'd assume like only council members had these big, and and you, and you wouldn't assume there was a different color for every Jedi. <laughs> uh, but uh, supposedly they're telling us that the five hundred first and and Rex is kind of based off someone who uh, Tartovsky, uh, Captain Fordo from the two thousand three Clone Wars, who was basically just a red Captain Rex, um, essentially. Uh, and um, this is this is a part I always thought was sick as as a kid. When uh the um Rex and his troops are following Anakin with jetpacks as he's jumping off a high ledge, and they say, "What's our plan of attack?" And he goes, "Follow me." I always that, and I thought it was sick this time too. So, um, you, you were like, you, you you wouldn't think if you asked the question, what the plan was, and that was your answer. You, you don't think you'd be a little upset? You know, you'd maybe want a little more details on the plan. You you certainly would, but this is Star Wars. <laughs> you know, Star Wars. There's a, there's an air of silliness, um, always. Uh, of of course, of course, you would be. Um, but I I think Anakin's really cool in this. Uh, obviously, he's he's way he doesn't he's just a different guy. It's it's like God versus the Old and New Testaments. 
Um, it just makes no sense. Um, but uh, I, I thought the shit was pretty cool. They, they fight these giant uh, like droids with the things on them, um, which uh, is the one that Anakin jumps on top of and has the other one shoot it. Did which, you see the bunny droid? Yeah, yeah, the bunny droid. I like the bunny droid. Which we see throughout the show. Um, that that bunny droid comes back quite a bit. I wish there was one in this room. <laughs> yeah, I I don't because they're they're almost exclusively evil in well, the yeah, show. We, you know, we had a nice one that it, you know served tea. I suppose there there's one in the show that runs around with a bomb trying to blow up a bunch of well, people. Yeah, but the one here wouldn't do that. Okay, hopefully. Do you like that it uses its ears to grab things? I, I do. I do enjoy that. Um. But but these these giant droids we see them they're from Revenge of the Sith, um, uh, from My Gito, where Kiati Mundi is killed, uh, which is a lot of the stuff we see in the show is from Revenge of the Sith. Um, uh, we we get the famous decapitated clone, remember that part when they they all get up to go like charge and one of the clones just gets shot and his head comes off. Famous. Uh, I, I, I assumed it would be famous because I thought there'd be more recognition when I said it. Because cause I, I remember when I was a kid and I'd watch that, my dad would, because obviously my dad loves this movie, my dad would be like, Jesus. <laughs> he, he thought it was cool. I, I will say this movie and show in general for like kids programming does does push it quite a bit. I guess. I, I mean, decapitation, the decapitation scene's Kind of crazy. Not, not in SpongeBob, huh? There's no decapitation in SpongeBob. R- yeah. Or Jimmy Nutrin. Yeah, right. I mean, th- there's also, um, I mean, I can't think of any immediate examples, but but there's there's some pretty crazy shit. I mean, just like like in a lot of kids shows, like kids action shows on Cartoon Network, no no one really gets k- murdered. <laughs> Folks, we heard that Amari um starting to open open a beer. Opening a cores. Um <laughs> she's oh, she's so that, insulted that I come in anger. We would we would even uh oh. assume she might have a cores. Oh she's getting closer. Uh yes, sweetie. You guys know you drink cores? Um I've seen I've seen you drink cores, yeah. Willingly. Willingly? What like, like unwillingly? <laughs> We, she said we drink cores because we're psychotic, which is crazy. Not even just cores, but car cores. She she just said we're crazy because we drink car cores, which um, she abbreviated as CCs. Um, I like how you came out and defended yourself. Bane, Bane's <laughs> loves a good CC. Me too, actually. To be honest, I don't I don't love them. They're they're a necessity. Yeah, you have to. What are you, not going to drink? Can you stop almost touching me with your feet, please? It's really freaking me out. All right. Is is that that a look that means no? That you can't stop almost touching me with your feet? I don't know. Bane's, Bane's having his foot pointed towards me and keeps swinging it around, like almost grazing me with his toes. Um, Yeah, so... uh, the, there's there's some cannons and there I, I always thought this clone was stupid as a kid because there's cannons that are firing and there's a clone that just goes. <laughs> I, I thought he was really stupid too. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really stupid. You also notice the binoculars they look through, just is is sheer metal on the front. Like there's no lens, <laughs> so how are they seeing? I don't know, is like a camera or something. Yeah, like Star Wars is a thing where certain things that sh- don't have to be futuristic. You know, and like you, like they they show it sometimes, and, and like you can like barely see it. Yeah, or they, like they'll filter. they'll show what it looks like through the binoculars, and it looks like a little worse <laughs> than the binoculars that are on Earth. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, this cores is delicious. I bet it looks it. Um, did you like the uh, the alien general we get? Um, not really. From the separatists, the the Scottish man. Irish, we'll Scottish, back. Irish, something like that. Um, I like Baines. You said before that you weren't a huge fan of how they use like the different accents from different countries as kind of the alien accents, which I I guess I can kind of understand. Well, I didn't say I wasn't a fan of it. I just thought it was silly. 
Um, no, it's definitely silly. Um, and I, I can understand because I guess like when you go to like Jabba the Hutt, he's not like a clear portrayal of an ethnic group. Right. You know what I mean? Actually, he kind of is. He's. Well, I, I just thought the, the Nemoidians uh, specifically, specifically were crazy. Right. Because they just have an, like a Chinese accent or Japanese accent. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, they're, they're just so like slimy and gross. Well, to, to be fair, like Jabba the Hutt. So like the Jabba the Hutt Lego set will never be reproduced because of how it um, offended um, Arabian people because of how Jabba's like a big fat fuck with a woman on a chain in like a Middle Eastern styled palace. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so it's, it's, it, he, he, now that I think about it, he does kind of, you know, I, I guess you could say the Geonosians are not based off of a, a group. Mm-hmm. Or not, and not the Kaminoans either, really. <laughs> <laughs> the Kaminoans are the Jews. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Christophsis, it looks suspiciously similar to uh, Tartofsky when he does the banking clan planet <laughs> at the beginning of his show. The banking clan. Which also, again, makes way more sense because the banking clan is a place that's part of the war. Um, we own, we we never see the bank for in, in in Tartovsky's. He tries to put all the aliens that are from the different armies allied with the separatists, like in the thing, to make it make sense. And then in the Clone Wars, we never see any of them. There's droids that are there's entire ships that are all droids, so they're just like ghost ships with no living people on board. Um, which I I don't enjoy. We we don't see the banking clan to like season five the in clan. in one episode. Are they cool? They're all right. They're really cool. They'd be cooler if someone else was writing the scripts. Um. But uh, yeah. Again, like a like a battle here. Like, like like it it would be obvious to us why taking over the banking clan planet would matter because they're allied with the separatists. It's unclear what's happening here at Christophsis. Uh, it's just a fight for well, the sake of. Isn't just they're taking over planets that succeeded. Isn't that just kind of like the idea? No, but Christophsis doesn't secede. And, and also, um, in the Clone Wars, they never the Republic never fights the local population. The local population is always trying to get the Republic to help them stop the Separatists oh. so they can be the heroes, which is stupid. Because it should be like in, in like the 2003, the Banking Clan don't want them on right. the planet. Um the mic just touched my lips. That's that's good. <laughs> that sounded good. Um. Uh, and then we we meet uh, Ahsoka, who is, um, kind of like you, a very scantily dressed child. She sure is. Uh, reminds me of a uh, cuties. Remember that whole <laughs> thing? Um, wearing a very uh, short skirt. And and as the seasons continue, she dresses hotter as she starts to go through puberty. <laughs> Which is um, uncomfortable. And something else that's uncomfortable and strange is that her and Anakin are closer in age than him and Padme. So it would just make a lot more sense. Is that true? Yeah. Anakin, I believe, is 19 in this movie. And I believe she's 14. (laughs) Or something along those lines. Might be closer. Um... So it would make a lot more sense. I guess they can't date, but it's it's so it's a weird thing. It's like, you know, like like when I worked when I since I work at the warehouse, when I've only been there a month and then I'm training someone who just got hired. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of what it feels like. Um, did you did you like the V nineteen Torrance? The the what? Uh, did the, you have a little ad in yours? Uh huh. Did I what? The V19 Torrents. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you think a torrent like the... No, the, these bands are the clone fighters with the three wings. You know oh. the three wings that go down like this? Uh, a Lego set I always wanted as a kid, but evaded me. Evaded your grasp. Yeah. Um, which those were first introduced in the 2003 uh, as well. Um, also, how, how do you feel about the all the Jedi having armor? I think it's fine. 
It's kind of neat, actually. Yeah, I, I I guess I think it's cool. Uh, the the chess piece is kind of based off like the Darth Vader thing. Um, they they also do a thing in this movie, and in, in at the beginning of the show where where the characters look very cartoonish, and as the show goes on, they start to make characters look less cartoonish, like for like the super battle droid, how they completely change the proportions to make it look very bulbous. Um, or like obviously Yoda. Yoda looks crazy in this in this movie. Yeah, Yo- Yoda looks pretty crazy. Um, but like as it goes, as the show goes on, they realize Wait, it just starts looking look, look, like it looks way better as it goes on. Well, they, they realize people don't really want to see, um, like uh, cartoon versions. They just want to see the characters look as look as close to normal as possible. Plastic mold Yoda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the clone helmets look a little different. They look kind of worse in this one than the movie, um, I think. Um, but yeah, everything. R2 looks different. Count Dooku looks crazy. Count Dooku looks ridiculous. Um, because they're, they're trying to base it off the style of Tartovsky's, um original sketches. But it's, it's weird because they have this 3D thing. And I, I think that a lot of the 3D battles look really cool. I just don't know if if the three D style goes very well with like two D cartoons made three D. Uh, I think it looks okay. I mean, it was just kind of rough at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But they got like way better at it as it went on. Um, what do you think of Rex's haircut? His bleached hair. Yeah, <laughs> his, his slim shady. <laughs> I mean, I, I think. Why it's did like, they give him the exact haircut of Slim Shady? Uh, it's just a, a bald buzz cut. I'm a, a, a blonde. It's why is it why is his hair bleached? How come so many clones are dying their hair? Well, because they all look the same. So you know. Oh, fair fair enough, I guess. Um, I suppose that makes sense. Uh, we see a we see some corporate alliance tank droids. One of the few times we ever see those throughout the show. Um, we also see a forward command platform that's from Attack of the Clones. Uh, that might be the only time we ever see that. Um. What did you think of Anakin's cute nickname for Ahsoka? Snips. Because she's snippy. I should call Amari Snips. <laughs> <laughs> that fit pretty well. I think I prefer Sky Guy. Yeah, isn't, isn't that awful? Sure is. That's really bad. That's really bad, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, did you enjoy the Camo Teth Arf Troopers? The, the scouts, mm-hmm. they, they were fine. I think he just wanted to say their name. <laughs> well, it's the only time we see ARF troopers in camo throughout the entire show. Um, th- this is a pretty interesting thing. Did you notice Commander Cody's visor? Were you paying attention to that? Doesn't he always have it? He does. At least he's supposed to. Um, however, a silly thing that happens here is I don't know what happens with the computer graphics. <laughs> it they up? can never get these visors right. Why? What's wrong with them? Um, so Commander Cody will be in one scene with a visor. It will disappear. It will be up. It will be down. He'll not have it for a while. He'll get it back. Um, it's the same thing. that There's like um, a YouTube video that's a super cut of uh, Commander Bly from the first season. Just his visor. He's running around his visor from... <laughs> Scenes that are are literally just second cuts. His visor is going up, down, disappearing, off, gone. <laughs> and it's lit- I don't know. They always have trouble with these visors. A little animation error. I I guess because I I was looking at Cody. I was like, oh, I guess I guess he doesn't have the visor in this movie. And they jumped cut to Obi Wan, jump back to him. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I, I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah. Um. I I guess a lot of people just don't really notice. Um. So uh, yeah, Anakin meets his apprentice, uh, which is is dumb for obvious reasons. Um, Anakin's supposed to just obvious. I I think the show should have started like the two thousand three one where he's still an apprentice. You know, obvious, obviously. So you see the beginning of the war, and see his relationship with Obi Wan. Like maybe have an apprentice thing with them, and they relate. But instead, Anakin becomes a father. Right, so then we can spend time on their relationship and just kind of forget. Rather than the people that we already care about. Rather than forget about Obi-Wan and Anakin, who we crucially need character development for. Um, 
Obi Wan's also weirder than I remembered in this movie. He's very strange. He, he he's is, like, like everything a, to him is like a weird joke or quip. It is. He's not very serious. Um, he's a lot more like serious. Like he's he, he kind of like I'd be scared to talk to him. Like he's just <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't seem like a he seems out of it. He seems he, he seems spacey. He does. Um. Like like he's suicidal. Yeah. Let's hope this works. I hope I hope Skywalker can get the job done. I hope so, Commander. If he doesn't, it will be the end of us all. He doesn't really give a shit, I guess. <laughs> or maybe he doesn't really believe it'll be I don't know. Um Uh so then uh, Kenobi does some negotiating with right. the um, alien general. Um, and you know, you know why they have him negotiate? Because Grievous calls him the ne- negotiator. Right. And you need to see everything. <laughs> uh, uh, the negotiator. That isn't him negotiating. <laughs> yeah. Him negotiating is him. Com- have, you, have you ever seen the YouTube videos of every war crime the Republic commits? No. <laughs> it's like, it's just all false surrenders, <laughs> false negotiations. They, um, there's one where Anakin surrenders like a cruiser in one of the episodes and it's a false surrender and he uses the cruiser to blow up the entire, like, it's just a, a big, it, it'd be an issue. Um, there's a lot of droids, um, just going up to a jet and going, <laughs> I got you now. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, the, the droid voices in this movie. Yeah, uh, the dro- it'd be better if they just didn't talk. Yeah, well, it'd be better if they... I, I think the droid voice in The Phantom Menace is perfect. Do you remember what they sounded like in The Phantom Menace? They didn't sound like you. No, did they talk? Yeah, I, I love their voice. Like, like a... An, Another Star Wars clip I watch on YouTube is just the commander, one of the commander droids talking to Qui-Gon because I think his voice sounds so cool. Um, I, I love the droid voices in The Phantom Menace. And then they don't really talk in Attack of the Clones. I think they, they might say like one line. Right. Um, so you don't really hear them. And then when we get to Revenge of the Sith, they suddenly have cartoon voices, which is awful. And then this movie adopts the cartoon voices, which are like a lot worse. And they're all comic relief. Yeah, and it's tough. Why, why have a scary enemy force when you can have little gaffes? Yeah, right. Like like in the 2003, they had the Phantom Menace voice. And then another weird thing, because in Revenge of the Sith, the super battle droids also have the silly voice. Remember when they're, they're quipping at R2-D2 in the hangar? Mm-hmm. Um, however, in this in the in the show, they have like a deep like, roar, 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 voice, like menacing voice. So it just, I I I don't like things like this when you create more holes. You know what I mean? Like like, you you have like the 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 show like Joe Joe <laughs> Joe Lucas. <laughs> it's like it's like George Lucas has like he 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 put up like a wall and he really fucked up and there's a bunch of big holes in the wall you now have this ability to go over with plaster and kind of fix some things up but instead you just start jabbing the wall and you just start making more little holes you make it make less sense um yeah what would you think about the soda can droids um they're they're the big droids that come out of the ground they look they have the wi- the wires. After you know how Anakin and Soka get in their little box. Oh yeah. And go to the shield, and then the droids come out of the ground. Do you not remember that part of the? No, movie? Yeah, I didn't really have an opinion on them. Cause just well, Baines, when I when I asked you about it, you could say I didn't have an opinion. Well, I I did, I didn't remember what they what they were. Right. They were so forgettable. Yeah. Right. Um, they look pretty easy to defeat. Um, as do all the droids. Every single one of them. Um, did um, you li- like Anakin and Ahsoka in the box? I think that was funny. Funny? <laughs> oh, they were quipping about, you put me in here. You, hey, you did this. Whoa. You know? No, I didn't think it was funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> I laughed hard. Um, uh, we we do see a two twelfth trooper directing some cannons. 
<laughs> yes, he does that exact thing. And I think he's a reskin of the guy who did it earlier. <laughs> and then we also see Rex does the same thing. So what I think they did is they reskinned the clone to be the regular clone, 212th, and then Rex. I would say I'll do the same. Um, and we see the 212th trooper who is like uh, Commander Cody's group. Um, which I wish we just saw more of them. I, I, it always annoyed me at the beginning of the show how Rex and Cody both just lead generic clones when they supposedly have their own legions. Like, why wouldn't he be leading all 501st clones? Like, is it that hard to add some blue to the clone troopers? I don't know. Probably. It's probably really hard. Well, because cause they, they have one. They, in this whole movie, they have one 212th trooper. Can't you just copy and can you just make a bunch? Like it would be better. I don't know. Probably you could probably easily do that. I just I think it'd be cooler. Um, uh, super battle droids are taken as prisoner, which is weird. Um, did you notice that? No. Okay. Um, then we're we're told about Teth, which is a jungle planet in wild space. Uh, I thought I thought Teth was cool. Wild space. <laughs> yeah. Um, Teth, which is supposedly like a crazy jungle. I guess we don't really see that because we only see we see a building. We see a monastery, which I I, I guess isn't that crazy because you know in Empire Strikes Back we are told that like the surface of Bespin is crazy and then we never get to see it. Yeah. Um. I, I don't actually I don't even know if we're told that. I think a, a visual dictionary tells us that. <laughs> It's an, an additional fifty fifty dollar, fifty dollar <laughs> book. Yeah, so it's like how the word Ewok isn't in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Is it not? No. <laughs> Is it on, on the credits. I don't believe so. I'm I'm not sure. It it might be in the credits, but it's not spoken in the movie. All right. That's. By the way, that that girl um, you sent me the video of the. Reviewing the Star Wars Hotel. Did you finish that movie? It's a movie. Uh, yeah. Well, I listened to it at work. Because at work, I have time to listen to long podcasts. Uh, she's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like her videos. She's as autistic about Star Wars as you are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I listened to her um, Rise of Skywalker uh, review. It was, it was also pretty good. She She said a line. She said one line that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> she said... Um, when Palpatine is talking to Kylo Ren and Kylo Ren brings up Snoke, Palpatine goes, I made, S- <laughs> <laughs> I made Snoke. And then she said, she said, I was thinking like, oh, okay. Like I was assuming he meant like, like he trained him and like he got him up to where he is. And then she goes, oh, no, he meant he, he made him. <laughs> Uh, that movie is t- so stupid. I guess our Rise of Skywalker review will be the grand finale uh, to these. Um, I guess. We're not going to be reviewing it for a while because we have a bunch of other Star Wars. Maybe to talk we have about. like fucking 20 more movies. Yeah. But she's uh, Jenny Nicholson. Is that her last name? Yeah, Jenny something. Yeah, yeah. Jenny. As if she needs a plug from us. I know, right? She has fucking over a million subscribers. Well, yeah, no, she does. Um, um, yeah, she's really cool. I watch her every once in a while. She's like just kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Video she, about. She's somehow an amusement park expert. <laughs> I know she's like that's, twenty. That's 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 niche. She has like twenty videos on like Disney. Mm. That's very strange. She has one video on like like it was like uh, lame things in Disney that she likes, like in the park. Right, right. And it's just, it's just it's kind of giggle. They're just so like really stupid things in the park <laughs> yeah, that nobody yeah. else likes. I just I don't know that she enjoys. That was silly. Um. Uh, okay, yeah. So, so now they're they're having Anakin go on the mission to save uh, Rhoda, who I don't think his name is mentioned in the film either. I think uh, it is. Is Rhoda mentioned? Pretty sure. I don't know. I, I, I I'm pretty sure it was mentioned. Okay, I I don't know if maybe I, not. Maybe it was. Um, but Anakin and Soka and Ahsoka, and I guess Obi Wan's supposed to help. Are supposed to <laughs> save save Rhoda, or no? Obi Wan's supposed to go to Jabba's palace first for some J- reason. Jabba's duped really easily. Oh, by by the the back and <laughs> forth. What the Jedi did when 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 a, a ship that the the ship that kidnaps is it not known 
by the people of, of Star Wars <laughs> that Count Dooku is, is a Sith? No. I don't believe so. Because I, I didn't think it was. But I don't no. know why it's not. Because late, sometime in the show, you see Count Dooku in front of like his separatist version of the Senate. Well, yeah, I know he has like an alter ego where he's like a, a politician. Yeah, so you'd think there'd be some propaganda from the Republic. But the, the Jedi know he's a Sith. Yes. And they wouldn't just tell everyone? I guess maybe you could think of some reason they wouldn't want to tell everyone. I can't imagine why. Um, I was just thinking that, like, why is Jabba listening to a Sith? Maybe he would, because he's evil. Um, uh, to be fair, I don't think J- Jabba would like the Jedi any more than the Sith. Right. Probably. And he might like the Sith more. Because he's evil. Because he, he does... See- and he eats frogs. Right. Well, in Return of the Jedi... Jabba looks bad in this movie. Uh, yeah. He doesn't look great. Just so, so much more. He looks the same as the um, a, a New Hope. A mad on scene, right? Well, he does. He does not look that bad. It's similar. It's not veins. When's the last time you saw that? Pretty recently. Really? Because that that's like one of the worst things I've ever seen. Yeah, it's bad. They're both. I think they're both bad. There's so, there's so much worse than the puppet. The puppet's so good. The pu- the puppet was amazing. Um, as silly as some job of the palace scenes were, the puppet was really good. Uh, the puppet's like one of my my favorite things. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I have a, a Jabba right over there. That's why. Yeah, I mean, I think he looks cool. Um, but, what, um... What Cole's like, does he move and he almost broke it? Yeah, Cole almost fucking rips the head <laughs> off. I can tell him no, Cole. He doesn't fucking move. Um, <laughs> Cole goes like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and Cole talks shit about Graham for breaking his fucking peanut rat or whatever. Um... But yeah, Jabba looks pretty rough. I, I just, I mean, I actually don't think he looks that bad. Um, Baines, your your comparison to the New Hope thing is crazy. Like, if we put a side-by-side, side, the New Hope one looks... I saw clips from the Boba Fett show on yeah. YouTube. I'd never seen it. Right. But apparently they added how Bib Fortuna took over Jabba's palace. Yeah, yeah, right, and, and right. It's like fat Bib Fortuna. Yeah, yeah, he's I, fat. That just came to my mind. It looked really silly. That was very... And that's also... Um, the stupid thing about that is that that's at the end of a different show. So it's at the end of the Mandalorian. <laughs> was it really? Um, which is the really stupid thing they do with Star Wars shows now is that you can't like it. Like if I put on Shogun, right? I only have to watch Shogun to get the entire show. You don't have to watch season two of Game of Thrones. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, which is stupid. I guess, I guess it's their way of making you watch everything. Yeah. Um, but you know what, what, whatever. Uh, and, but Jabba, Jabba, it just really annoys me that he's even in it. Um, yeah, Tatooine it's, again. It's Tatooine again, like like when you said there's six planets in Star Wars, <laughs> um, and his his palace just looks really empty too. It it just looks like a, just like an empty room with like a few guys sitting around. Did you notice that there's one alien, um, in his palace? Uh, do you, do you know what the Gran are? They're they're like the three eye goat Pete guys. So they have one alien that's a Gran, but it's just Obi Wan's exact body model with his armor and like his whole thing, but then just a Gran head. And he's he's in like every background scene in Jabba's palace. Um. Uh, let's see here. Um, I speaking of edginess though, um, a stretcher with decapitated heads. Like that's that's pretty edgy for like a kid's thing. Yeah. Maze, I love when I say things and look at you, and you stare back, <laughs> like I guess hoping I'll continue or just change the subject. Um. But uh, yeah, I I think they could just get away with shit like that because it was Star Wars, you know. Yeah, there's like no blood ever. Right, there's no blood, but but in other shows, there's not even death, you know, like, um. Like other other kids action shows except in family guy when brian died <laughs> that was so fucking stupid <laughs> yeah oh yeah you ever, see, you ever see the the rest in peace brian griffin tattoos that some people have uh no i haven't seen those 
I'm glad I haven't. Imagine getting that. Imagine seeing somebody with that. Uh, that yeah, that sounds kind of rough. Re- rest in power, Brian Griffin. <laughs> rest in power. <laughs> rest easy. Pour one out. Um, you ever heard someone say that? Pour one out. Yeah. I don't really get what that means. Like pour out a beer. I I think so. All right. So the ground gets it, so it seeps into the body. Yeah, so it kills some grass. <laughs> okay. Um, we also, in the background, uh, so so we see some clone gunners, um, which I think is cool. Because um, it's, a, it's a new, unique clone to the Star Wars universe that mans all the turrets and the, uh, the big cannons and everything, which I think is pretty cool. And we see a unique one uh, walk by in the background that is in a later... Um, arc in the show um there's, it's also like a weird thing like there's so many characters in this movie that are in episodes of the show that like they must have made a lot of the episodes before the movie came out because there, there's like do you remember that um those episodes in the show where like r2d2 is kidnapped you remember that why who he's kidnapped by a uh, like a Trandoshan scrap guy. We must go save R2-D2. It'll take five episodes. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. It, it takes... Uh, like, kind of like a... He's he's captured and then the guy sells him to General Grievous. They have to get him back because supposedly he has secrets oh, on yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which kind of makes sense. Shows how Anakin has problems with attachment. I guess it's fine. Um, but... uh. The uh, the Trandoshan like scrap guy who is kind of the main guy who captures R two D two and gives him to Grievous. He's just in, he's just one of the background aliens in Zero's palace at the end. Is it the same guy? It's the same exact same. I, well, I, I don't know if it's lore wise the same guy, but it's the same exact model, same outfit, same fucking everything, same attitude. <laughs> um, I don't know if you really tell his attitude because he's a three D. Uh, thing um yeah the the different clone haircuts the clones haircuts in this look crazy like i've I've seen a few like memes with just different clone silly haircuts <laughs> um like, i think there was one that was like it's it's all bald up to here but then it's like it's like weirdly long like like have it do you notice the clone in this with the the double mohawk <laughs> no the double red mohawk which is actually Commander Gree's hair that we see later in the show. Gree. Are you familiar with Commander Gree? No. no. He's the, um, in, in Revenge of the Sith, he's... Commander Green. Well, he his armor is green. No. He's the, um, he's the commander of the Kashyyyk troopers in uh, episode three. He's the one who sneaks up on Yoda and he cuts oh, his yeah. head off. Um, but he has a double red mohawk. Um... Which is interesting. <laughs> Vane's eyes widen at my amount of notes I have left. Vane's wrong. You can, you can take a Zen time for yourself. Oh, yeah. That'll, that'll help. Um, the the music from this movie, I, I used to play... I used to be an avid player of Clone Wars Adventures when I was in uh, fifth to sixth grade. Was that the browser game? Yeah, yeah. It was like the Club Penguin, but Star Wars. So all the music in this, I just reminds me of like a fucking mini game. Um. Uh, let's see. We see Anakin's uh sleeveless robe. Um. <laughs> he's studying the Zins very intently. How many Zins we got left, by the way? Zin chill. We might have to run out before the night's over. Get a few more. Man, the suspense is killing me, dude. Oh, we got, we got, we got plenty. Um, Jesus Christ, I was scared. I was scared there. Uh, You're scared. <laughs> uh, Anakin and Soka have sleeveless sleeveless robes because it's hard to, uh, I guess, make sleeves. Um, 3D. I guess they have sleeves later when they kind of figure it out. <laughs> um, the uh, I I I love the way the clones talk to each other. Um, they're I think I think it's very suspenseful when they're landing on Teth. In the gunship, and then we get the red light, and all the clones are chattering, and Ahsoka looks kind of nervous. Um, I love that. Um, I think her reverse grip saber is interesting. 
How, how, how do you feel about Ahsoka's reverse grip? Well, it's just like your favorite anime character, Thorfinn. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the difference is this is like supposed to take place in like a, a Jedi magic universe. So it's fucking Finland, Finland saga. saga. It's fucking like they're like they're like they're like crazy. Yeah, but Vinland Saga's different though, because like it'd be cool if like the reverse grip is something that was like from like a Norse legend or was like in some Nordic art. But it's just based off silliness from other animes. <laughs> like like the anime ish stuff is just anime ish. You know? Yeah, I, I I guess. His reverse grip and his his run. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to rewatch the first season after liking the second one so badly, but I just, I don't want it. I don't, I don't want it to be sad. I feel like I'm going to watch it. And I'm going to see Thorfinn do his little run. And I'm going to be like, Oh no. <laughs> oh no, that was bad. <laughs> um, um, do you, you remember the the gag where the droid looks over the edge of his binoculars and yeah, then he falls? That was fucking stupid. Um, this is a, this is a kid we went to school with. <laughs> he told me that in like fifth grade. Did he did he like it? He was like it killed him. <laughs> <laughs> he like, couldn't handle it. He was cracking up just talking about it. <laughs> did Did you laugh along with side him? Uh yeah, I was I think he actually saw the movie before me. I hadn't even seen it yet. Wow. Yeah. Um I I think the vertical climb battle up the Teth Mountain is amazing. I think it's an amazing idea. Um obviously I'd probably do it a little differently, but I think it looks all right here. Um I think that's I think that's a really cool idea for a battle. Yeah, it it is neat. Um There's a you know, you know how I think I mentioned this in Attack of the Clones. Um, Gendy Tartofsky do, did a lot better of a job of like having the Star Wars movie sounds in his cartoon. What do you mean, like the sound effects? Just the sound effects, like 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 when you watch like uh, the opening to Revenge of the Sith, for example, you hear all like the the sound effects from the ships, like the engines revving and like the the blasters and shit, and it sounds really cool. And then you, you'll hear that if you watch the 2D show, too. So you put all that shit in, and it sounds really cool. And then if you listen to this, everything's just, like, a little worse. Like, it's just... It just doesn't sound as cinematic. Just the noise of everything and the blaster bolts. Um, it's like they're in an empty room. Yeah, I sort of like that. But, it, yeah, yeah, kind of like that. It's just... It's, it's not as... Um, you don't hear sounds all around you. You know what I mean? I almost just knock the fucking. Um, and uh, part of that uh, also, which is really bad, is the uh, Jedi rock music that we hear in this show. Um, I, I think the only time we hear it is during this uh, vertical battle. But um, we, we get some sci-fi rock. So, uh, so with Star Wars, the soundtrack's usually kind of a orchestral thing where going off the rock we get and it's like it's 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 almost like a rap beat that we hear and and they do this at the beginning of season one until i presume people said hey this is awful <laughs> and then it's removed from the rest of the show um the, the jedi rock yeah it's i I, it's it's only it's only in the the cliff battle in this, but it's it's in like a few of the first episodes of season one. I don't think I know. I even noticed the music where it's it's been it's been scrubbed um, from the rest of the show. You don't think you didn't even like dance alongside the music? Um, no, I, I like the regular Star Wars music. I think Ooh, it's. Can I rock? Um, I uh, I liked when Anakin gets him in the middle of the droids and they're like surrender Jedi, and he he rolls and he opens his eyes and he does the cool action. I think I, I I really really like the action in this movie. Why would they just shoot him? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> uh, they 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 probably would. Um, but you know, how how come the stormtroopers aiming directly at the heroes hit them never? And how come the heroes hit them on first shot every time? Um, it's just kind of the silliness. 
But I, I, I love the action in this. Um, I liked this movie a lot better than I thought I would, to be honest. Um, and then they get to the top. They say, these are too many droids for them to be renegades. Which I guess renegade droids are a thing. Uh, and then the, I guess this is a B Behomar Monk Monastery, which is like the Jabba's Palace one. The spider things. Yeah, yeah, the spider heads that you can ride in Lego Star Wars. And they're oddly creepy. Yeah, they're really creepy. Um, it's what uh, they're huge too. Do you remember when C three PO sees it and it's like massive? Are, are they huge? In, in they're they're like not huge anywhere else <coughs> except for. Return of the Jedi, it's it's huge. Like C three PO sees one, and it's it's like bigger than him. <laughs> um. Yeah. So so Count Dooku, I I didn't even notice he was a Christopher Lee uh a voice part in this. That's that's pretty cool. Um, do you think it was cool when they were kind of walking um in in like the dungeon of the monastery and the droids were kind of just like watching them from the shadows. And then kind of started following them, like yeah, it was all right. It was, right. It, it was, it was kind of weird, and uh, I thought it was cool. Um, uh, the uh, the hut baby is awful. <laughs> what? I like how the hut baby's cell is just a big room with nothing in it, and he just slithers around it. <laughs> I just suck. There, there's one scene uh, with a hot baby because I guess he he has a cold or something. Which uh, Yoda, uh, Ahsoka eventually gives him like aspirin, a, a, a space Advil. Yeah, and he gets better. Um, but there's one scene where he's <laughs> the baby's just he's like laying on like a shelf. He just has like a blanket over him. And he, I, I just, I wish I had the, uh, the visual. I thought you might have, but he's just like in the background. He's like on a shelf with a blanket, and he's just, it's because he's fat and has arms and no legs. <laughs> and he, he also just vaguely looks like me when I lay in my bed. Um, but he just, it's so stupid. Um, uh, oh, what, what's this note here? Uh, and Nick equals baby hut. Oh, we it looks like we're on the same page. What, so what what were you thinking there, Vans? What was um? And for that note. Yeah, yeah. What was the reasoning there? Oh my, my fucking! I'm so sweaty. My underwear is sticking to my ass. I think that's probably what I was thinking. Something along, okay. along those lines. <laughs> well, Vans, I wear pants. I'm like a hut who has a tail. Also, when when we in the show, uh, they they go to um like Nal Hutta or whatever. Whatever the hut homeworld world planet is, we see like the hut council. And they look awful. Every hut is like cartoonishly. None of them look like huts. They're all like shaped weird. One has like a giant monocle. One has hair. <laughs> One has hair that's sl- black and slicked back, <laughs> like a Italian gangster. And then he has a small mustache. <laughs> and he has like a little suit and like a flower. It's not cool. And it looks so... It's so sad. Sounds kind of scary. It's really sad. And then there's Gardula. Gardula's in the show. Who ah, you, yes. Gardula the Hut. Who you heard about previously. Why don't you just aim your light towards me so I can... Um, the famous Gardula. Right. And she's voiced by the same actress as uh, Ventress. Um, but uh, she just looks exactly like Jabba. But she's purple. No, that's Zero. <laughs> Which one's Gardula? The hut in this movie is not Gardula. Gardula's in the show, right? For a few episodes, it's it's a hut that looks exactly like Jabba. Only they made her a little more womanly by making her fat tits like a little bigger. Gardula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you want to get me another cores? Yep. All the ones that are right here. Oh shit! I don't know why I thought they. I, I must still be fucking tired. Um, do you notice the Eopi? Are you familiar with what an Eopi is? Yeah, I I knew one in at, in college. Um, so the Eopi are the uh, the Tatooine pack animals that we see uh, in the Phantom Menace, and then we also see. 
uh, Obi Wan ride one at the end of Revenge of the Sith to drop off Baby Luke. Um, uh, oh, I also have this note. I had an Ahsoka uh, action figure when I was a kid that came with the uh, Road of the Hut baby in a backpack for her to wear to put him in. We like. Wow, thanks, guys. <laughs> like when you got it for Christmas or something. I was pretty pumped. Dude, I, I was trying to look for my action figures the other day because I, I used to have a ton. Yeah. Um, you did have a ton. Because w- when I got older, too, I started like not ruining them. So I had a lot that like weren't ruined I was trying to find. And I couldn't find them. And my dad's like, oh, no, I, I have them downstairs. And I look in the garage and he set up battles. All my action figures have been taken out. Where in your garage? Oh, you know how he has those shelf of stuff? They're just all around the stuff, <laughs> like as if those are obstacles in the battles. And the, the like stormtroopers shooting out from behind, like fucking PVC pipes. That's cute. And like Count Dooku and Obi Wan are set up to fight. <laughs> and I was like, all right, dude. When I was a kid, I'd always have my action figures set up in a certain way. And when I was away, my dad would go into my room and set them up into a different <laughs> battle. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Um. Yeah, so uh <laughs> what you say? You're like where are they? Yeah, they're being played with. Yeah, no, he would go in my room and just play with my toys. <laughs> um Yeah, so we we meet the uh the protocol droid um who I guess is in the monastery, which that is uh that weird head that protocol droid has, that's from uh, a new hope, which in the lore those are supposed to be imperial protocol droids. I knew that at one point. So I guess they existed before the Empire, I guess. And then the droid just escapes and finds Ventress again, I guess. Um, then, then we get the damning recording that Jabba freaks out about. Is um, Yeah, when he gets duped. Yeah. <laughs> also, do you like when Annika was pulling Rhoda out from under like a table by the tail? <laughs> that was pretty good. Was going, ah! Like he was a raccoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, but... It's just so Anakin's stuffing him into a backpack, and Rhoda's like freaking out. And Anakin goes, "I hate huts." And then Ventress takes that recording and goes, "I got the recording you were looking for." Did they know he was gonna say that? Did they know that was gonna happen. I think it's more so just video of them, you know, with the the, the kid. I guess. Right, but if they were tasked to find him, wouldn't Jabba maybe think like, "Oh, they just found him." You'd think. Um. Uh, also, something else I noticed, Anakin in this, we do see his Jedi Starfighter briefly, and it's the same red one as Obi-Wan's, which gets blown up in the show, which I guess sets up for him to get a yellow one for the rest of the show. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the cool blue one that he has in the 2003 uh, modified uh, one with pod racer engines. And unfortunately... You you ever see that one? I I don't think so. It's pretty cool. Anakin has like the regular Jedi Starfighter, but he just added pod racer engines on the front. But I guess it's too it's too silly. Uh also Teth has the same exact archway that we see in Jakku in episode seven. Uh that I thought was interesting. Um I also think the characters look a lot less uncanny when they're in like kind of a dark. They look better when they're in like a dark scene and there's some sort of blur. When you, can, you can't really see them. But yeah. I'll see for like any any computer thing, you know. Right, right, right. Um, What's well, like you're squinting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, it looks kind of good, but then you know. <laughs> but then they start moving. Um, this is, I guess, I guess a nitpick, but. Anakin's lightsaber on his waist was like almost as big as his forearm, <laughs> uh, which was weird. Um, we get the thing, the classic uh, controls to doors in Star Wars. If they are shot or destroyed, the door will open or it will close. Um, it would be the opposite of what it, it, it is now. <laughs> yes, it will change states. Uh, Inventress is so much better in the 2003 one. We see her intro in... Cause, Cause, in this one, she kind of breaks the rule of two, because she's essentially just another apprentice, like a third Sith. 
Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of mini sits. <laughs> right. But like in the 2003, it makes sense because uh, Dooku and Sidious both agree that she's only that she's they tell her that they're going to accept her. But as an apprentice, but they lie to her because they send her to kill Anakin, knowing Anakin will kill her and that it will make him more closer to the dark side. So they they don't really take her in in the, the original show. Um, but, uh, I, I think the, uh, the captain Rex force choke in mind control or Jedi mind trick is pretty cool. Um, I also always thought that vulture droids are cool in the show, especially, uh, in the show we get, um, some episodes of them fighting on their legs <laughs> in their standing mode and walking around. Yeah. I thought, I always thought that was cool. And having a meal. <laughs> um yeah the, the clones are very suicidal um they're so suicidal there's a lot of scenes with the clones just um punching droids with their bare fists <laughs> yeah i know i feel like that wouldn't really do anything what, what do I do? right which i i can overlook just because they are programmed to fight a war and because like i guess it looks cool <laughs> but it, no it, it does look cool i mean it's just like Throughout history, like militaries that were able to get their soldiers to be okay with killing themselves in battle just always did that. Yeah. Like Spartans never fucking surrender, except for sometimes when they do. Um, uh, and we, and we do see Anakin. Remember when I, I, my criticism of Attack of the Clones was when he jumps out of the, the speeder? Everyone says, I hate it when he does that. He does a lot of those jumps in this uh, film. He jumps off the giant droid. He jumps on the bug coming, <laughs> coming out of the hive. Um, Man, what the fuck was like, we should have taken that bug. <laughs> In response to the ship they were flying. Yeah. She says bug. <laughs> <laughs> she, babe, there's no way she says it like that. She, she does actually say that. She says bug. She says we, we would have been better off on that there bug. <laughs> That seems and like, he goes, what did you just say? That seems like crazy characterization. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't write the movie. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Obi-Wan got a haircut. They removed his mullet. Yeah, right. They just gave him episode three hair. I think I prefer the mullet. To episode three hair? Well, no, I, I definitely don't prefer the mullet. Uh, which they also gave Anakin his episode three hair. Um, because they only based this movie off episode three. I think they should have kept the mullet, and it would have been like twice as long. You know. Um, no, I think that's all right. And that would have been good. You ever see An how long Anakin's hair is in the last season? Yeah, it's like it's really long. <laughs> it's like past his shoulders. Yeah. Um. Did you notice? Uh, so Obi Wan comes to give some uh, aerial support. Did you notice Oddball the clone? One of the clone pilots, as a reference to when he's in Revenge of the Sith. He's in Revenge of the Sith at the Battle of uh, Coruscant, when he's in uh, his, his Arc 170. And he's spazzing out. And he's like, help me, I'm going to be killed. And Anakin's like, I got to help them. And Obi-Wan says no. Um, which I, I think it would be good, too, if in this show uh, they showed, like, um, kind kind of made like a a relationship like that between Anakin and the clones, where like a lot of the other Jedi were more like cold to them, um, or Anakin's more sympathetic to them, and like, uh, that kind of is your light on? Yeah. Okay. Um, he's he's like more sympathetic to them, and like that that's that's what I would put in the show. But they're, um, they're all kind of sympathetic, I think, right? In the show, at least most of them are. The the Jedi are extra sympathetic to the clones. Even the Jedi that in lore are supposed to be harsh with the clones are nice to the clones in the movie. I mean, in the show. Like Kiati Mundi. Yeah, Kiati Mundi. I guess the only one is Paul and Krell, the uh, Dexter alien <laughs> with two uh, Darth Maul lightsabers. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that'd be cool. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we'll, that will never happen. Um what I see, uh, da, da, da. oh yeah, the the note about 
Uh, the only reason Anakin drives that stupid freighter is because of the line from Uncle Owen, which is stupid. We we have so many things that Dave Filoni could like give um, like elaborate on from the movies. And what he chooses to elaborate on is what was just supposed to be a clear lie from Uncle Owen. Like, we don't need to see a freighter that Anakin drove sometimes. Um, I mean, that's all of Star Wars. What do you mean? It's just this one line transformed into like a, an entire episode's worth of content. It, and I, I don't hate that. I'm just saying there's a, there's a lot of things that need more context. And if Anakin might have driven a freighter, which which no one, we we don't. First of all, it's better if he didn't. It's better if he it's better if he never drove a freighter and it was a lie. Yeah, that's why Soko was like, "We should have taken that bug." <laughs> okay, she was concerned with the the bug. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying she was concerned with the films not being. Um, no, I was talking about the bug. No, I I no I know I'm aware you were talking about the bug. Um, I, I like when the super battle droid grabs a clone by the arm and just shoots him in the gut. In the bug. Um, <laughs> we go back to Jabba's palace. Remember that alien I said who has the goat head with the Obi Wan body? We see two of them talking to each <laughs> other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we get kind of a Return of the Jedi reference. Where uh, I think this is when Ventress says to um, Dooku that she failed, and Dooku and she says like she's sorry and she'll I guess try harder or get Obi Wan or something. And Dooku says, "I hope so for your sake." That's like in Return of the Jedi when the commander goes, "We don't have time to finish the Death Star. We we need I in Darth Vader's like, I hope you finish it for your sake." I guess that there were some deleted Return of the Jedi scenes where. There's actually going to be like a, a a side plot about the other guy not being able to finish the Death Star. Sounds b- boring. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I have a note. I used to have this Wii game that I used to love, where you could you would lightsaber duel, um, and they were all like from the they were all from the Clone Wars show and movie, the duels, and. Uh, this this is a level I used to love because it was easy and it was it was Obi Wan versus Ventress in the temple, um, but in the in the video game they fall through the floor and there's a there's a rancor pit and there's a giant rancor you have to fight around. And I thought that was just in the video game. But that's like apparently a deleted scene from this film. There's supposed to be a rancor pit with a rancor in it uh, in the temple. Why? Uh, I guess because Jabba has the same palace and he has a rancor in his. <laughs> Um. Why? <laughs> uh, and Obi Wan's very flirty with Ventress too. Um, he is, which is it's strange. Like, it's like he wants like part of his like unhinged personality. Really. <laughs> yeah. The it it and I always thought that they were both flir- flirty until I rewatched this. It's and she, him. She's not really flirty. <laughs> like it almost comes across as um, he's just hitting on her and she hates misconduct. It. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Like he would talk to like like the Jedi HR about it when he's back. Home. Right, right. But you would think Obi Wan would like just crush Ventress. Cause is, uh, is Obi- yeah. Isn't Obi Wan like one of the top like five Jedi's? No, I don't think he's that high. No, like power wise. I don't believe so. I think I think he's supposed to be like a. I well, he's supposed to be pretty powerful because he's on the council. So I, I guess you could say someone on the council should crush Ventress. But I, th- I think as far as Jedi on the council, he's like Not mid. Five. I think he's mediocre. But I think the council is like the top, whatever, 10% or 5% of Jedi or something. <laughs> I would just think Obi-Wan would, you know, immediately. Uh, Probably. Yeah, you're probably right. You know, just kill Ventress. Uh, we're, you're probably right. I mean, he did do really badly against uh, Count Dooku. He's probably drunk. In the <laughs> yeah, because he does drink. I guess. I guess when he's drunk, he gets a little, uh, a little sexually aggressive, <laughs> he gets um, a little flirty. And uh, him and Ventress eventually they fight against uh, Darth Maul, which is which is stupid. Uh, Darth Maul coming back in the show, I think, is good. Um, 
with me- like a, with mecha legs. Right. I think th- I think the concept is good. I think what he does and uh, what happens after that's pretty bad. He says he says I got to get new mega legs. Remember when he says that? Uh, nope. I um, must have missed that scene. Yeah, I, I must have missed that one. Um, uh, Anakin and Ahsoka go to land. At a- I better ride this here bug to get some new mega legs. Remember when he says that? He, he says he has to ride a bug to get mega legs. He's, he's in the show. Uh, that doesn't sound familiar. Um, but um. They they go to land in the hangar and gets destroyed and that's that's kind of a brutal scene <laughs> and, and and like Anakin's very um laissez faire. He's so light on. He's so on. Yeah, all right. But um, the the debts his action causes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they they always are. It's like well that didn't work. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's what now now the fun begins. <laughs> yeah, know. it's it's but crazy. They can have a bit more of a um, I don't know. It'd be a little bummed out if that happened. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, then, so then they go into hyperspace, get to Tatooine, uh, which, you know, whatever, we've seen Tatooine a million times. This, but, uh, this show, by the way, I, I believe is the first time in Star Wars we see what, like, we, we see like the blue hyperspace tunnel really? that ships supposedly go through. I'm pretty sure. Because like, oh yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't think we ever see characters like look out the window in hyperspace in the movies. I don't believe so. There's one um, episode in the show where, like a, a astromech droid, like falls out of one of the ships while they're in hyperspace and just disappears. And to me, that was always terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty scary. Because the droid's just in the middle of vast, empty space where no one's ever coming. That always scared the fuck out of me. Like imagine they push someone in like a spacesuit out I, into there. I know. That'd be so scary. It'd just be nothing. Yeah. Um, we get we get a few lines about Tatooine being Anakin's home. Uh, not not much elaboration on it, and they're mostly annoying because Ahsoka's asking him. And when Ahsoka talks, it's annoying. Um, we get the Magna Guards, which previously in lore uh, before the show were exclusive to General Grievous. They were supposed to be uh, they're supposed to replicate his like warrior clan he used to fight with. But now I, uh, everybody has them. Um, you know, Soga could take out a few. I feel like, you know, what is she? Right. I feel, I just feel like she wouldn't be able to as a, as a child. Right, right. I mean, because they're clearly meant to fight Jedi. Yeah. Um, and, like, in the, in the 2003 show, like, Shakti, like, can't beat them. And she's, like, an actual Jedi. Um or at least it has a, a difficult time. Um, the uh, the Magna Guards try to shoot them down with their uh, their star fighter, which I, I think I think it's cool that we see that the Separatists do have um, at least one star fighter where they, where a person can sit in. That's not just a droid, um, and that that's also the star fighter later in the show that we see Cad Bane fly around, um, and that was a Lego set I did have. Uh, however, I'm very sad because that was a lost one. You lost it. Uh, yes. Where'd it go? I don't know. Um, and I, the Magna Guard figures are really cool. And now I only have like I have like the head of one, <laughs> and I just wish I had the whole thing. Um, which will one of my biggest regrets ever. Um, is it, is it discontinued? Discontinued. The fighter. Oh, I mean, they discontinued Lego sets after like two years. Yeah. <laughs> Dooku falls for the classic rock in the backpack trick. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Which Jedi supposedly can sense life. So wouldn't he be able to sense Anakin didn't have Rhoda? He sure would. He just has some rocks. Maybe he was... You know what he... You know what you guys don't realize? That he was sensing the microorganisms on the rocks. The, he, was sen- he was sensing the rocks. <laughs> yeah. But he does that. And then um, they fight. Uh, Bane's just skipping ahead a little bit here. Not a lot. Um, the Twilight gets its bottom wing shot off, and then for the rest of the show, it has a different bottom wing. Thought you might think that was interesting. Um, I can't can't skip that tidbit. <laughs> God forbid. Uh, Padme's introduced. She is. Her hair looks pretty bad. Um, and she is going to convince Jabba's, um, sexually ambiguous <laughs> uncle Zero. 
uh, to uh, I don't know. I don't know what she's going to tell <laughs> that that the republic's doing the right thing. I guess. Um, which that, that Jabba's getting duped by the uh, by the old um, by Dooku. Yeah, and and so I was like, "What? He wouldn't do that, but he was doing the duping. He was doing the duping." Uh, what do you think about Zero being sexually ambiguous? Um, it's fine, I guess. I, I'm not. It's not bad. It's just weird. I mean, like how he's just not like his Jabba. You know, that's something. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's, he's he's different. He's unique. So you like his kind of um, whiny his personality. <laughs> yeah, he has that. That gay Southern voice always reminded me of um, that uh, Republican senator, I think, from one of the Carolinas. Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, yeah, yeah. Always reminded me of Lindsey Graham. Um, Lindsey Graham's like, I hate the gays. They shouldn't be able to vote to marry any stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's, it's very strange. Um, We had a kid we went to high school with um, that my my ex-girlfriend would tell me because she was friends with him. Uh, cause he, he was just a clearly a gay kid who would hang out with all girls and just was a staunch conservative and hated gays. <laughs> it was just very, which is, I guess, kind of sad. Um, but, uh, yeah, so so Zero is kind of, because I, I think they, because I, I think Zero is a, a male hut. Because Zero has a romance arc later in the show. Oh, it only took 12 episodes. <laughs> yeah. uh, which everyone was dying to see. Zero's romance arc. Where is the Zero romance arc? Um, I, Dave yeah. Filoni, I will take your cowboy hat away from you and wear it myself. If I don't, hear the, <laughs> if I don't see the Zero romance, does he... Oh, wait, no, I might, he, he, it's, it's with a, um, an alien, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's with it's with the. I forget, um, I forget what kind of like I remember it looking weird, but I forget what kind of. It's a character like. from the original trilogy, the singer. The singer. Oh yeah. This is the singer from the hated special edition singing scene. That would be Cy Snoodles. It was, it was the same character. I, I just thought it might be the same alien. Uh, no, Baines. Of course, it's not just the same alien. When you have the same alien, why not take the opportunity to show how small the galaxy really is? <laughs> it's only, only twenty five people. It's only a few people. It's like a, a high school class of people. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I think the concept of a Coruscant hut is pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I, I, I like that quite a bit. Um, if you'll notice, Padme flies her Episode 3 Naboo Cruiser to uh, Zero's Palace. Oh. We get a text here. That was so loud. Um, I got a text from Amari. That she does need to eat dinner at some point. Um, Ooh, afraid of Mari. There's no dinner to be had. Yeah, let me just uh, let me text her back, folks. We're almost done. We're at the end. Yeah, we're almost done. I'm gonna say like uh, 15 more minutes. Uh, 15 more minutes. Sorry. All right, cool. Um, yeah, so she flies her episode three ship, but then you'll notice that when uh, C-3PO comes to rescue her, he's in her episode two ship. Um, that she, her, in her episode two ship is what she flies for most of the uh, show. Um, and we see in the background, Zero the Hut has these special astromech droids. I just noticed them out of the corner of my eye. They have like... The corner of your eye. <laughs> They almost like evaded you. Um, they they just have like one big red eye. Um, she has like a few of those serving drinks. Um, uh, we what what was happening with? Do you remember that that shadow that was dancing behind Zero? It was like a dancer that was a shadow, but the person wasn't standing in front of Zero. A shadow? There was a shadow of a lady dancing behind <laughs> Zero. But there was no person dancing in front of Zero casting the shadow. Maybe it was Zero. So, okay. Um, so that shadow was confusing. Um, we we hear hilarious... Pad, Padme overhears hilariously um, uh, damning dialogue from Zero. Um, what does she say? What if she found out I helped you kill Jabba's son? Or kidnap Jabba's son. It's the equivalent to Obi-Wan overhearing. 
with these new battle droids we've built for you. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, later in the show, so Zero eventually gets uh, captured or whatever at the end of this year, and that sets up the uh, episode in the, the first season when Cad Bane rescues her from the from jail, or him, or whatever it is. Uh, they call it her and him, but then Zero, the romance is with, a, a, I guess, a woman alien um and then yeah the zero romance plot uh we get a nice looking sunset on tatooine um do you like do you like how they had multiple like assassin droids like ig88 as like a little security force i love that (laughs) okay uh they they first did that in the 2003 series where uh the with dirge the bounty hunter had like his own personal army of ig88s and then Anakin says, when he when he when Dooku discovers his rocks, ha ha, you've been tricked. How does it end? Do they just like walk away from each other? I forget how it ends. Uh, Anakin, Anakin rides away on his speeder because Dooku reveals to him that his Magna guards will get Ahsoka, <laughs> um, which it's silly because both characters reveal their plans to the other. <laughs> the Hutlet is with my Padawan safely at Jabba's palace. Oh no, she's not with my Magna guards. It's like, well, you could have if if you knew that, Count Dooku. Why don't you go after the Padawan? It'd be a way easier fight, and have the Magna guards just distract Anakin. Um, and like we cut to the Dooku laugh, which is awful. <laughs> awful. You, you don't laugh like that. You know, it's like when H three H three reviewed that that. When you do those off-brand like DreamWorks movies, there's like one about this like panda. I just remember like the bear like glitching out while it's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me of Count Dooku's laugh in this. Um, what do you think of the Coruscant troopers? The red guys. Mm-hmm. I guess they're the precursor to the shock troopers we see. Commander Fox. I mean, they're just like every other, all the other clone troopers. They're exactly right. the same. <laughs> right, but you, you don't prefer a certain style to a different one? Not really. Okay. Um, remember when I was a kid, there were always Commander Fox Halloween costumes at party stores, which seemed weird to me because I felt like he was a very minor character. Commander Fox? People love Commander Fox. <laughs> he just came out in a uh, recent Lego set, Phase 2 Commander Fox. He came out in real life. He's emerged. <laughs> He's been cloned. Um, also, you'll notice all the thugs in Jabba's palace have the exact same blaster. And all the um, thugs in the entire Clone Wars show have the same blaster. And not just the thugs. Any soldier or member of any armed group that is not the Republic or Separatist have the exact same guns. Um but Ahsoka saves the day by uh, delivering Rhoda because Anakin shows up and starts threatening Jabba, which makes sense because, I mean, out, out of all the Jedi to send on the the Hut mission, they send the guy that was enslaved by the Huts and is like kind of teetering on the edge of and, dark sideness. Anakin's by far the the worst one. He yeah. Anyone else. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Jabba says that Zero will be dealt with by the Hut family when he finds out about the betrayal. Uh, but that's not true because Zero goes to Republic Jail. So, um, but I guess Zero is dealt with by the Huts uh, after he escapes jail because I'm pretty sure they they kill him. I think I think they kill him or have Cad Bane kill him. Um, spoilers. Um, spoilers. People online are always like wait like like podcasts or like reviews are always way too skippy around spoilers. It always annoys me. What do you mean? Like they, oh, they never want to give a spoiler. Yeah, I mean like. Why would you watch a, a two-hour review of a movie you haven't seen? Or no, I well, because I've I've done that. But why would you watch a two-hour mo- review of a movie you haven't seen if you want to watch it first? Well, it's not even like a review. It's just like like there'll be a podcast about not even like a movie, and they'll start start they'll start talking about a movie, you know, or show. Go spoilers, and they'll be like, oh, we, we can't talk about it at all because spoilers. I'm like, all right. Oh yeah, I mean, you can just say spoiler warning. But but a lot of people just like won't. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, those, those drop the conversation. Yeah, that's that's annoying. 
Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not bad just to throw out a quick spoiler warning. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can say it. I don't mind saying it. Right, like, right. Like, I don't know, just avoiding the conversation at all. Like, at all. Just... Uh, Anakin and Padme speak for the only time. Um, just he says, thank you, Senator Amidala, while she's on the hologram and telling you. You're Jabba. welcome, my husband. Yes. Uh, we see Count du- Dooku's solar sailor, but it doesn't do the thing. <laughs> um, Boy, I hope somebody got fired for that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the uh, the movie. Yeah, uh, a lot better than I was thinking. I was, uh, it was, I mean, it was better. Than I thought I was still kind of bored. Uh, I I think I was less bored than like the Phantom Menace. I I wasn't really. I don't think you enjoy the Phantom Menace more. For probably yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Music was better. The Phantom, yeah, the music was better. Um, so let's. See. I gave the Phantom Menace a four. I gave Attack of the Clones a six. Uh, I'll probably give this a six. You give this a six. Um, well, it's it's just. I don't know if my rating. I guess I guess if I just rate it as a standalone movie without reference to the, but well, it's really not a standalone thing. It's a reference to other materials. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it like a four and a half. A <laughs> four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it doesn't work at all by itself. No, I mean I I think. I don't even know if that really matters. Like people always say that with like tie movies to things, you know. I I th- I think it matters. Maybe maybe like a, like a little bit, but not like a, I don't know. I think it matters from a review perspective. Maybe, but it's just like more. Um. Well, the the reason I said that is because, as a standalone thing, it's kind of a fun adventure, mm-hmm. a little kitty adventure. Uh, but it really, kind of makes the lore worse. In a lot of ways, um, it's four and a half, maybe a five. I might get a five, actually. Yeah, I'll yeah, I'll do I'll do a five. I'll go, I'll go to a five. Um, I mean, I I did I did like it though. I I I liked it. I I just I wish the lore wasn't awful. I don't even know if I liked it that that much. Really, I don't know. Yeah, I I had a pretty good time with it, but yeah, I guess there were a lot of silly parts. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars movie, folks. Clone Wars. That movie. is a five out of ten. Uh, and we have to wrap this up because Amari Amari's hungry. is hungry, which is a a uh, reoccurring issue uh, in my life. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess we're, we're, me and Ben's going to enjoy some delicious cores. Uh, I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see Zen time tonight where uh, I spit into the mic. Yeah, what a shame. Um, Next time, maybe. Let me show you guys. These aren't all going to be here by the night, by the end, uh, by 